I finally got the chance to watch Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, and I have to say, as a Spider-Man fan, as a fan of animation, and as a fan of comic book movies in general, this was definitely a really, really great movie. I wouldn't go so far as to call it perfect, as I do have some minor nitpicks for it, and some criticism, but it's overall a really great movie, and you'd be doing yourself a disservice if you like comic books, Spider-Man, animation, or just a good movie in general, and, and not go watch this movie. You will not regret it. Now, I'm going to do something different with this video. While this is kind of a bit of a review, for the first few minutes, and then I'm going to go deep into spoilers for the movie with my overall thoughts on what's being told in this story, what could happen, and what I initially thought about everything that happened in this movie. Though I will notify you when spoilers do happen. I know I usually do anime and manga content, but I just liked Spider-Verse so much, I wanted to make a video on it. And I might make one on Beyond the Spider-Verse when it does come out, if I'm able to. Let's see if this, movie, if this video does well, it could end up flopping. Who the heck knows? But let's just start off with my initial review of the movie. Now, I'm just going to say what a million other people have said. This is a great movie. I honestly really enjoyed it all the way through. From its different animation styles for each individual character, like with the first Spider-Verse movie, to even extending that into going to the different realities and seeing those in those different art styles and animation styles, it's just a real feast for the eyes. From the individual character expressions to how things are portrayed in specific scenes with the coloring and lighting, it really immerses you in the actual movie itself and even the other realities that we do end up visiting, making you want to spend a bit more time in those realities. We do spend a bit more time in Gwen's universe in this movie, and what it's done is that it is used with a lot of water coloring which is actually a really nice artistic choice because it actually is used to emphasize the emotion and tone of the initial scenes that Gwen's in, from her own mental state to feeling kind of isolated and depressed, as well as frustrated, to moments when she's breaking down emotionally and being more vulnerable until eventually it ends up being becoming more of a solid color when things actually do end up being more, I want to say, stable and calm in terms of how she is reacting to things and how these specific situations are dealing with her character and her own personal emotions. I honestly really like that, and it really does emphasize her little story arc in this movie. Now, this movie is a lot of a Gwen film, just as much as it is a Miles film. And I really did like Miles' story in this movie. From him being a Spider-Man for a full year after the end of the Into the Spider-Verse movie, to him now basically getting used to being Brooklyn's Spider-Man, New York's new Spider-Man, getting the trust of the people, and really just giving you the feel that he has literally become the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. That is one of the things that we've associated with the character of Spider-Man, no matter what interpretation we have. He's always there for people in the city, he'll help out, he'll talk to people, he'll literally help local businesses by literally swinging by, eating hot dogs from street vendors. He'll always be there to help, and that's the role that Miles has basically started to grow into, and he's doing a pretty good job at it. He's still improving, He's oh, it's only been a year, but he's proving himself to be a very competent Spider-Man. And through this movie, it shows, but also puts him in conflict with other characters such as Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099. And it all has to do with how the multiverse works with the villain Spot, and just the overall story is a very personal one for Miles. Like the first one, but in this one, it's a lot more personal, and what this does end up getting for Spider-Man as a whole is the personal sacrifice and choices that Spider-Man does have to do, and the very core of what Spider-Man is, which is to essentially help everybody. I'll get more into that in the spoiler section of the video, but that is one of the core concepts within Miles, and that's something that inspires other characters in this movie towards the end, but also puts them in conflict with other characters like Miguel. Which, again, I'll get more into in the spoiler section. Now, this is a two-parter movie, and we do end off on a very big cliffhanger. Which, I both like and dislike, because a really cool cliffhanger, you're like, Wow, you just left us off there, I cannot wait to see more. But on the other hand, in that final stretch of the movie, you could have ended it off, I mean, ten minutes earlier, if anything. There were like two to three instances in the final like 30 to 40 minutes of the film where you could have ended it there with a pretty good cliffhanger in and of itself to lead into the next movie but it is what it is it's not a deal breaker it's just like a nitpick to an extent and certain aspects like miles's family interactions and drama you could shave down maybe like five minutes to an extent even some stuff with the other spider people but overall the pacing of this movie was relatively well done even though there are sections like i stated it could have been shaved off a bit as it was a bit slower 
but I kind of appreciate the slower pace as it builds more towards like a Miles' family dynamic, his dynamic with Gwen and the other spider people that we end up seeing later down the road when you when he discovers this whole spider society, which we've been literally shown in the, all of the trailers because it's a Spider-Verse movie. And lastly, I stated this with the different animation styles, but it does feel like a multiversal film because we go through multiple different realities throughout the movie. And this is more so like a multiverse of madness, unlike multiverse of madness where we only see like two different realities outside of the main one this one feels more like a multiversal film where dr strange i enjoyed it i like sam raimi's vision for how he directed everything but just wasn't that great of a movie at the end of the day and wasn't really much of a multiverse movie you didn't really have to make it a multiverse movie but that's honestly my thing i don't know if anyone else agrees with that opinion the cameos in this movie were really great i'm not gonna say everything but i will say this I appreciated a lot of them. I've I've read a lot of previous Spider-Man comics. I know a lot of the characters, and seeing a lot of these iconic characters from video games, old TV shows, uh, other pieces of Spider-Man lore, or just made-up ones on the spot. It was really, really fun and creative. But the movie itself is like an eight, an eight, and eight point five out of ten. Besides those, honestly, nitpicky moments, it was a really great and solid film. It could be a nine, but I do feel like that some plot threads were left dangling for the sequel that. Could have been slightly adjusted but it's kind of a me thing it could easily be a nine but i slept on it for a bit and it's more of like an eight and eight point five other people say it's a perfect movie it's not 100 percent perfect but it is like my personal favorite of the year outside of guardians 3 which was another really great movie but yeah spider-man across spider-verse really great movie i highly recommend you watch it and that's basically the end of the spoiler free section of the video now we're getting into a discussion through the actual spoiler esque topics of the movie. So if you haven't seen Across the Spider-Verse yet, go watch it, leave the video right now. I appreciate your time. Now for all of you who have watched it or don't really care for spoilers, let's get right into it because I do want to talk about this for a good like five to six minutes. So let's just get it right off the bat. Miguel O'Hara is a really awesome antagonist for this movie. Same thing with the spot. I'll get into the spot in a second, but Miguel is my personal favorite character from this movie outside Hobie Brown who is just an absolute delight honestly if you didn't like Hobie Brown at all or warmed up to him throughout the movie with the small amount of time he was on screen I don't know what's wrong with you he was incredibly fun one of my favorite parts of the movie and I liked him in the comics and this movie just made him like him even more spider punk awesome but in all honesty Miguel O'Hara basically being like the leader of this Padre secret group secret multiversal group of spider people to in order to stabilize the spider-verse due to everything that happened with into the spider-verse's multiverse shenanigans making like random holes throughout the spider-verse causing what's known as anomalies or just different characters mainly villains being drawn into other realities risking tearing apart the fabric of their of the, the reality that as we know it and even acknowledging that the events of spider-man no way home and to an extent, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, with all the multiverse shenanigans, did not help in the matter. And Miguel took it upon himself to get as many spider people as he can from across the, unit, the multiverse to help him stop these anomalies and bring them back where they once belong. And one of the main conflicts of this movie that is brought about when Miles meets Miguel is the stuff about canon events. Specific events like Uncle Ben's death or... As we do know, a captain that is close to Spider-Man basically dying, saving somebody, and Spider-Man wasn't able to help them in time. And those are all important canonical moments that help progress Spider-Man's story and is part of them as a person and their lives. And Miguel goes on to state how that is very important, that if you mess with the canon, it could end up tearing apart the very universe that that Spider-Man is from. And if enough of those anomalies and universes happen, It'll end up collapsing in every single part of the Spider-Verse, being a multiversal threat. And Miles learning that his father is going to become Captain soon and getting a vision because of the spot when he found another reactor in another, re another universe to power himself up to an absurd degree, knows that his father is going to die soon. And he wants to go and save his dad. But Miguel tells him not to. For the main thing that A, if he does so, to create a big enough anomaly to potentially rip apart reality his own universe and eventually could affect everybody else and so basically him and a bunch of the other spider people in this spider-man society 
basically try to keep Miles from saving his dad for the good of the multiverse. Even characters like Spectacular Spider-Man tell him about this, as a lot of these characters have gone through their own canonical events and know the risks of being Spider-Man to sacrifice and are trying to tell Miles that you can't save everybody, which Miles does not agree with. Gwen struggles with this, Peter B. Parker struggles with this, and as we see at the end of the movie, we get the original squad from the first Spider-Verse movie with Gwen, Peter B. Parker, Spider-Man Noir, Spider-Ham, Penny Parker, and Spider-Man India, Paviter, and uh, Ho Hobie Brown, Spider-Punk, coming together to help to try and find and help Miles at the end of the movie. But it's more of the fact that people were struggling, why was every single Spider-Man willing to risk you know, these specific characters having important people die to them to protect the whole multiverse if they could potentially try and find a way to stop it. And the main reason is, A, a lot of them have already gone through their own canonical events and essentially end up agreeing with Miguel. But Miguel is someone that's lived by experience. He found reality where he was a father and that version of him died. So he decided to live a happy life in that universe, take his place and live a normal, relaxing life and fulfill it by having a family. But then that universe basically destroyed itself. Now, everyone's brought up that there is some inconsistencies in Miguel's story. There's that and also the fact that Miles himself is an anomaly that didn't destroy his own universe for over a year. There is a lot of things to go into with Across the Spider-Verse, which are basically, well, theories in and of itself. But the entire second half and third act of the movie is literally M Miguel and Miles and all the Spider-People fighting over the good of the multiverse and just weighing over everything. And I think this movie really ties in Miles with this whole whole theme throughout the movie of people telling Miles how to live his life, who to be. And right now, with Miguel, more or less out of both jealousy of the fact that Miles, in, in, a, is a, in a sense, is an anomaly that didn't lose everything, but also the fact that he is an anomaly and the fact that, he, that Miguel himself has lost everything and has witnessed worlds being destroyed for destroying canonical events, is just angry, bitter, and has just seen some utter shit. So it's understandable why other people would follow him to make sure that others wouldn't have to know or risk other people being destroyed by destru disrupting these canonical events. But what's great about Miles, as I stated, with people not wanting, with him not wanting people to essentially run his life for him, is the fact that he is his own person. That's what all these other Spider people are. Yes, they have similarities in terms of like their origins and certain events in their lives, but at the end of the day, they're all different people and individuals slightly similar in many ways or completely different but that's what makes the whole idea of the multiverse so fascinating and there is one core part of being spider-man that miles really emphasizes and showcases in this movie and that's the want the need and the will to save everybody that is a core characteristic of pretty much every single version of spider-man regardless of their origins their universe the world they're in they all have the want the need and the will to help everybody they can possibly can as miles wants to save his dad and make sure to try and find a way to save the multiverse and that's something that no one really wants to risk because that is a very delicate risk that could affect everybody but miles wants to find it and by the end of the movie other people that he's met and became friends with through the, through the spider-verse are going on their way to help them but this more or less in a much more extreme way mirrors the event at the end of the first Spider-Man movie by Sam Raimi where the Green Goblin holds Mary Jane in one hand and a bunch of children in a cart on the other over a bridge giving Spider-Man the choice to save one or the other and in that instance Spider-Man manages through impossible odds save both because no matter what Spider-Man will always do whatever he can to save others even if it's a difficult and nearly impossible choice he will try every single time. Oh no, what's wrong? It's Mary Jane. She dies, D tonight, right there at Alchemax. How do you know? For shock's sake, Parker, what part of don't poke around in the archives was unclear? Fine, I'm a nosy Parker, but now that I've found out, it's- It's what, my job to save her? I've got enough to deal with. You can't mean that. You can't just ignore that she's in danger. Hey, I'm trying to focus on what's important. What's important is not standing by and allowing someone to suffer or die because you do nothing. If you don't get that, then you don't get the first thing about being Spider-Man. You're the one who doesn't get it, Parker. The future depends on- My future is meaningless without her! This is gonna be a huge mistake. I owe you, Miguel. Big time. Shock and right you do. But, well, maybe this'll help even the score for everything the world owes you.
Thank you. I mean that. And that's why I like what Miles is doing here, as he also inspired others to help him and try and fix this messed up system. Now, like I said, there are inconsistencies with the whole canonical events, because Miguel replacing a dead version of himself in another universe should not really have caused a break in the canonical events, because he probably wasn't super important in that universe, as we've seen there is supposed to be a Spider-Man in that universe where he replaced him, because if that was a thing, then Into the Spider-Verse would have caused Miles' reality to collapse in on itself the second we got like four other spider people in that reality. And that's like, multiple people have done theory videos for it. I like this movie because it showcased, through Miles, the main core aspect that everyone loves about Spider-Man. Wanting to help others, but also getting up when the need arises. Because in any Spider-Man story, Spider-Man will get knocked back down, he'll face some kind of personal crisis or impossible odds but he'll always get back up and make it through it. And that's what any other version of Spider-Man or Spider-Person will have at their core. They're good people, they want to help. And that is what we're being showcased through Miles and now through the rest of the Spider-People that Gwen has managed to assemble to go help Miles. Anyway, core th themes of the movie aside, let me quickly talk about Spot as I spent too long in that previous statement. Spot, joke villain at the very beginning and has a pretty interesting connection to Miles, but I like how they turn this joke villain, and admittedly a character that I forgot even existed until I saw a YouTube video about it, a very underutilized or joke character in the comics, they made him into a legitimate threat. Someone who wanted to be taken seriously eventually goes to another reality, goes to another collider, somehow powers up to absurd degrees, and becomes a legitimate threat, a multiversal threat, and honestly it could just be an Avengers level threat in and of itself. But it was a really nice way to basically turn what's literally a meme character into a legitimate threat. I like the spot in this movie, even though it disappears halfway through after becoming incredibly powerful and we focus more on the Miguel and Spider Society canonical events part, this was honestly a really great portion of the movie. And Beyond the Spider-Verse is definitely going to focus more on the spot and the Miguel subplot. Now I do like the ending, like I stated with that cliffhanger, where Miles is actually in the original universe where the spider that bit him came from. This was established in the beginning of the movie, and if you go back to into the Spider-Verse, you'll notice the references and setup and foreshadowing for this to eventually happen. The spider that bit Miles in Into the Spider-Verse was not from his home dimension. He was not supposed to get spider powers, and if he didn't, it was saved by Miguel, his Spider-Man would have still been alive. But now Miles is Spider-Man, and when Miles had to basically run away from all the spider people, he ended up going into a machine that would essentially supposed to take him home. But since his DNA was altered by a spider from an alternate reality, he was sent to the reality where that spider originally came from. Thus, him being in a world where there is no Spider-Man and things are bleak, and in this reality, he's faced with an alternate version of himself that is the Prowler working along his Uncle Aaron being jaded criminals. And that's where the movie essentially ends off with Gwen getting the Spider Squad to go find and help Miles. And that is really interesting because we got a Miles that wasn't supposed to become Spider-Man face to face against a version of himself that was essentially supposed to become that world's Spider-Man. Because there was an instance where someone pointed out on social media that I actually found that during that brief instance where we're told the origin of that spider, we see a sketch from behind of that version of Miles stating that that Miles was supposed to become Spider-Man and be bit by that spider. But yeah, this is a really nice what-if scenario, and I honestly do want to spend a good amount of time in this universe with the two Mileses talking and even fighting until Miles ends up having to go fight Miguel, maybe convince him to help save everything, and maybe we'll get a big secret villain outside of the spot in Beyond the Spider-Verse. But that's all there is to be left and be seen. And last bit I want to touch on, I loved Peter B. Parker in this movie, just being a overly doting and enthusiastic dad. I want to see more instances of Peter just being a dad because, let's face it, we're used to Spider-Man in any iteration just having suffering and not having the best life because he has to choose between being a hero and being a regular person and being a hero tends to make his personal life suffer. The fact that he actually has a kid with MJ is just so wholesome. I love it. And I just want to see more stories like this. If you want to get a story where Peter is a dad with MJ and a daughter, go read Spider-Man Renew Your Vows. It's a really short series, but it's honestly a really good one. Give it a read. It's nice. I recommend it.
But yeah, across the Spider-Verse, 8.5 out of 10 for me. I loved all these instances that I talked about, and I cannot wait to see everything resolve in the very next installment of Beyond the Spider-Verse, which is actually confirmed to be the last Spider-Verse-centric movie with Miles Morales. We have no idea if there's going to be another Spider-Verse movie after Beyond the Spider-Verse, but they could just do spin-offs of different characters like Penny, Noir. Noir is getting a live-action TV show, so that could end up being good. We can get Gwen, maybe something for Peter B. Parker, maybe Spider-Ham TV show. We did get shorts for that as well. Or a Spider-Punk show, I wouldn't be opposed to that. That would actually be pretty cool. Or 2099 movies or shows in that animation style. That'd be pretty cool. But yeah, I liked the movie. It showed that Spider-Man has to endure a lot of suffering, but it also shows the core concept of what Spider-Man actually is at their very core. The concept of the character is basically anybody can wear the mask based from the first movie, but also the willingness and need to help everybody, no matter what, and to keep getting up against overwhelming circumstances and adversities in order to fulfill your beliefs and live the life of being who you are. That is what I liked about Spider-Verse, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Let me know what you thought of Across the Spider-Verse were your favorite characters. Like I said, mine were 2099 and Spider-Punk, but I did like Gwen in this movie. I love Miles' story as well. He continues to be a really great character. And yeah, I just love this movie. I cannot wait for part two of this, for the finale of this trilogy. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on the movie, your theories of what's going to happen for Beyond the Spider-Verse, how it'll end, your thoughts on the spot as a villain, your thoughts on Miguel being the antagonist in the movie, how do you think everything's going to resolve, and where do you rank this in comparison to the first Spider-Verse movie? I'm still more the original Spider-Verse, but Across is very close to basically dethroning it. I'm probably going to watch it again just to get my full thoughts on where it stands. But yeah, with all that said and done, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe, hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really does help and it shows you guys enjoy the content I make on this channel. And who knows, maybe I'll make Spider-Man content in the future if this does well, or stuff on Spider-Verse, because we can make multiple videos on Spider-Verse until the next movie comes out next year. But with all that said and done, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you all have an awesome day.